hello there everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and i am back again with another video so for today we have two pairs we have the gbp aud and the gbp jpy so without any further waste of more time uh, let's get on with the analysis but remember before we continue uh no setup no trade if there's no setup you do not trade so let's get it i'm on the let me switch to the four hour time frame to identify my key levels and uh how would i do that i would switch to a line graph on the four hour time frame to do that so this is my highest high key level and this is my lowest low key level right and now catering for my previous key levels would be this key level that right here and uh this would be the other key level that I would cater for, right? I mean, sorry, no, 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 it's this key level right here. It is, it's this key level here. So, yes, that's how I would cater for my key levels. But let me try something real quick uh okay 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 so these are my four key levels as you can see uh now uh switching back to candlesticks uh i want to cater for this trend that i'm seeing here and i also want to add so now this is the trend that i that i would cater for this is the overall direction of the market that i'm seeing and this might be this might be an hourly time frame trend because it is too small for the four hour time frame right so for this trend here i do want to cater for this because of basically for future purposes you know should the market break out retest and give us a third touch then that's how we would then confirm that as my trend line but i do want to put it out there right so yeah uh now uh what i want to do is to cater for a zone that i'm seeing here this is the zone that i am seeing the zone that i'm seeing on this gpa dp on the four hour time frame so now moving back to the hourly time frame now that i have identified my key levels as you can see and the overall direction which is a cell moving on to the hourly time frame yes this is an hourly time frame trend it is not a four hour time frame trend so uh, yes let's cater for this trend properly yes so now uh, there's another zone that I do want to add before I continue, which is uh, this zone here. This is the zone that I do want to add. So now, since we are in uh, basically this cell um, setup, this cell trend, we are in a selling momentum. So, uh, should we be looking for cells? because sales occur more on a sell trend and buys occur more on a buy trend for example let me show you uh there's there's a more there's a large sell a small buy long sell short buy long sell short buy might also result in a long sell so they are um, there so sell long on a sell trend and buy long on a buy trend sell short on a buy trend buy short on a sell trend <laughs> if you know what i mean so uh now seeing that this is our analysis i'm seeing this as i'm seeing a pattern here which is an inverse head and shoulders here on this gpad pair this is the uh, pattern that i'm seeing so this pattern basically is a reversal type pattern so this is a signal that the market might push to the upside might be uh, preparing itself to break outside of this uh, cell trend right 
so now uh, wow i love this i love what i'm seeing so basically now what we can do is wait for a breakout and a retest on the zone or the key level and then should we then from there look for then should we then from there cater for our um buy trade right our buy trade so um now uh let me move to the okay yeah let me show you how it cater for this buy trade so the market should the market uh, push to the upside breakout and retest my zone or my key level should i then uh, cater for my stop order with my stop loss being just below the zone right there my take profit being either at the nearest key level which is here or can be at my key level there or my trend line right there but for me this would be my take profit for this trade right yeah my stop loss being here moving my stop loss there so uh reason being is that now uh this for this key level it's basically the 90 percent of the trend line because if i show you one thing that i've learned is that when you're trading a chart pattern your take profit would be the size of the trend line after the breakout where it, bre where it broke out so see now it breaks out um okay let, let's put it there at the zone so if you can see wow this is this is too much look at your take profit so this is how if the market were to complete the size of this trend line this is where the market would end up so for me here would be a good take profit personally and one thing is that it's the 90 percent of this trend line right it's the 90 percent of this trend line if it was a hundred percent then my take profit would be basically there to complete the hundred percent of this trend line but this is the ninety percent through the end one thing that i want you to keep in mind is that anything is possible if you do want to cater for that size of the trend line whereby you take profit is there it's possible you know so uh another thing is that for this trend line that i added it's also like a, a, a well it's also like a yeah well it is a trend line right but it's not that trend line that i would consider basically like as a strong trend line because obviously i know that i do have two touches basically uh for a trend line to 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 be valid is would be a minimum of two touches right so uh one thing is that should if the the market might give me a third touch and a third touch we know that uh, what the third touches do they impulse they impulse so a third touch might push to the downside so that is why i cater for the 90 percent of the trend here and as you can see the rest of the ratio is decent it's it's great it's a one is to three so wow this is this is great this is great so this is the setup that i have for the gbp aud pair and now catering for other scenarios would be so should the market sell right should the market sell and give me a descending type pattern give me a descending type pattern uh, should then my entry be there at the breakout of the the trend line right the breakout of the trend line let me remove this the breakout of the trend line and my take profit being there at the 90 percent of the trend of the bearish trend so uh with my stop loss my stop loss would be okay let me do this
okay just wanted to okay so my stop loss would be obviously below this key level here right would be below this key level here and as you can see the rest reward ratio is a good one is to 8.33 this is like massive this is too much so for sales i wouldn't be selling for this and another thing that i'm seeing is that i'm seeing this is a double bottom if the market does give me this setup that i'm anticipating then should i cater for the 90 percent of my trend line and as you can see whatever you're risking on this trade would be 8.33 times you would multiply your risk times 8.33 so if you're risking ten dollars on this trade then um your gains would be okay so if you're risking ten dollars your gains would be like eighty three point three dollars or something uh, yes eighty three point three dollars so uh this would be a, a good setup and also with the previous setup whereby the market does basically complete this inverse head and shoulders breakout and retest you would also have that risk to rate ratio of a one is to three so you would gain that thirty dollars if you're risking the ten dollars so uh, it's 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 i'm cool i'm cool with with the, the risk to the ratio as long as my number one priority is to follow my trading plan have a strong psychology and most importantly proper risk management so yeah this is the setup that i have for this pair guys uh, this is the setup that i have for this gbp aud pair and now our next pair which is the gbp jpy our next pair which is the tbpjpy uh now i'm on the tbpjpy let me switch to the four hour time frame uh, i've switched to a line graph to identify my key levels so uh this would be my lowest low this would be my previous low there and this would be a key level that i would cater for but i would put it in a red key level and not as a black key level because you know uh, with 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 strategies you are going to have your own special touches so this is my special touch on my strategy so yeah switching back to candlesticks now that i've i've, I've identified my key levels uh, what I'm seeing is that I'm seeing that the market is in a descending type uh, pattern or structure is in a descending type structure so uh, so what I normally cater for with descending type structures is basically if it's descending should I look for buys if it's ascending should I look for sells but if it's symmetrical, should I look for both buy and sell? Replay what I just said to get if you do if you do not get what I'm saying. So uh, yeah, now that uh, this is the setup that I have, I've, I've placed my zone and uh, I have my overall direction, which is a sell, and I have my key levels. Switching to the hourly time frame. Uh, one thing that I see, well, on the only time frame, there's not much to see here, uh, other than previous market behaviors or previous market data. Uh, this, uh, look at this, look at this. This inverse head and shoulders resulted in a push to the upside, and here at this week push down. Basically, if you were in this trade, you would still be holding unless if your stop loss was unless if your stop loss was just below this zone the market would have stopped you out here the market would have stopped you out here but if your stop loss was below this zone you would still be in the trade but be in losses 
So my advice to you would be that um wow stick to the trade man stick to the trade don't close either it hits your take profit or your stop loss that's that's all so uh, as i said on the hourly time frame there's not much to see but if i move to the 30 minute time frame i'm seeing that uh this is a downtrend i'm seeing a downtrend here on the 30 minute time frame and if i cater for the supporting trend line of the downtrend would be this here so i have my first touch and my second touch it might give me a third touch and put push to the downside or it might uh, break out and retest and continue further to the upside right so uh now the market is has broken out of this zone it might push to the upside give us a third touch before it actually sells and after selling it might then buy or it might uh, after retesting push to the upside breakout retest and then push to the upside and then your take profit would be at your nearest key level right your nearest key level so for this pay uh okay i do want to cater for this zone here because I, I, I see this as a sensitive zone i see this as a sensitive zone so uh yes so now let me let me cater for positions for basically entries and trades so this is my uh, setup for this gbp jpy pair and so basically this would be obviously buying a buy setup so uh this is how i would cater for a trade this is how i would cater for a trade on this pair so yes my entry so should, so should the market break outside of the break to basically break to the upside of this key level push to the upside the retest and should i place my stop order there okay let me move to let me move to okay to the 30 minutes so that you can see properly so what i what i'm saying is that a basically a push to the upside to break this key level and retest this key level and should i place my uh, stop order just above where the market reversed when it broke out so that if it does hit my buy stop then that would be a clear break that would be a clear signal for a buy a clear signal that the market is now buying so that's how it cater for a trade on this gpjpy pair and should the market reach this zone right here should i lock my profit right should i lock my profit uh basically at this key level here and the reason being is okay so yes that's where i would lock my profits once the market reaches this key layer, this zone whether it either touches or it breaks out i would lock my profits there why because as you can see here it gave us a weak rejection failed to push the upside reversed here it failed here it failed and it failed for the fourth time so uh one thing that you should also uh, put in mind is that the more touches it has the more the weaker it gets so if it has at least a minimum of three touches two okay i will say three because okay, i personally wouldn't consider a zone with just two touches but if it has a minimum of two or three depending on how you uh, basically cater for your zones cater for touches of your zones or your key levels then it's a strong if it has like two or three it's a strong one you should then now cater for it is like a strong zone but now here it has four the first might break out it might also it might either 
breakout or it might respect this key level but if it does respect the key level then the six the six touch would be a breakout and not a a, a, a rejection you know so yeah uh, so whether the market retest breaks out retest and pushes a bit I, I would lock my profits to, to this key level here and it's enough space for the market to give me these type of weak rejections of stopping people out before it continues with their direction. So this is how it cater for a trade on this GPJPY pair. So another thing that I want to add is that basically another setup that I would want to add is that if the market doesn't respect my setup then should it give me a third touch on the trend line push to the downside and once the market pushes to the downside should it give me a descending type pattern or a reversal type pattern with whether it's a flags or wedges or basically a reversal type pattern should i then look for buys and another thing as a confluence is that it would be a double bottom so should I cater for the trade double bottom with the uh, the reversal pattern that I'm seeing and also at my zone so I have more confidences for me to take the trade and the rest so the, so basically say now I do take my trade there and my stop loss would be just below the zone and my take profit being at my key level there at the top key level there at the top then as you can see the risk reward ratio is a good one is to 4.68 so this so that's how basically i would cater for setups on this trade on this pair i mean and yeah that's it from me uh, i'd like to thank you for investing your time into this video if you enjoyed hit that like button uh, if you have any questions or suggestions that you have leave them on the comments below and if you want more content subscribe and without any further waste of more time i will see you on the next video